The next thing is solubility. So what is solubility? Suppose I am making a NaCl solution. So I can make NaCl solution by taking some water and adding NaCl. When we start adding NaCl, it will be dissolved, dissolved, dissolved. After some time, we can see that the NaCl added will not be dissolved as much in um, when it was added initially amount. So <coughs> suppose I have water over here and I am adding NaCl. Initially, it will be dissolved completely, but after some time, the NaCl added will not be dissolved, but it will be remain stuck on the bottom of the beaker. So we can say that we have reached the maximum solubility of NaCl in water at that temperature. Note, I am saying too much of terms, you have to note that. Solubility, solubility is reached, solubility is reached at that particular temperature, at that at that particular temperature, particular temperature for NaCl, for NaCl at water. So many terms we have said. Now we have to understand very carefully and the terms will be useful for our next session of chemistry. So, what does this mean particular temperature and for NaCl at what? What does this mean actually? Suppose I have taken water over here and I am adding NaCl. So when the maximum amount of NaCl is reached, that will be called solubility. That is the maximum amount of a solute that can be dissolved in particular solvent. That is solubility. But why I am using this term particular temperature or for NaCl at water? This has significance. Suppose I am carrying out the reaction or the process at 25 degrees Celsius. 25 degrees Celsius. But, but if I increase the temperature, let us say up to 60 degrees Celsius, what will happen? I can see that if I increase the temperature to 60 degrees Celsius, 60 degrees Celsius, the undissolved part of NaCl, the undissolved part of NaCl that was sticking in the bottom of the flask that was getting dissolved and I can add more NaCl and that will be also dissolved. That means solubility depending on the temperature of the system. Okay. So that is why I have written particular temperature. Now for NaCl at water, why I am mentioning this one also? Suppose I am adding uh, NaCl in water and for the arbitrary value, let us say in 100 ml of water, I can make 30 gram of NaCl. That the value is completely arbitrary. I am just make uh, assume this one that in 100 ml of water, I can make 30 gram of NaCl and in that case it will be uh, completely saturated and solubility will be for this one 30 gram. But what will happen if I change the solvent, if I change the solvent, suppose, suppose instead of H2O, I have taken some let us say kerosene, do you know kerosene or suppose let us say hexane. These are all alkane type of compound, okay. Alkane type of compound. So these are non-polar, these are non-polar. And if I take 100, 100 ml of that one and if I add NaCl, I will see that it will not be dissolved at all. It will not be dissolved at all because it is polar over here and it is non-polar. And for the solvation or dissolution of any solute in a solvent, you have to remember that like dissolves like, like dissolves like. H2 over here is polar and NaCl over here is also polar. That's why they will dissolve easily. But in case of this one, NaCl is polar, but the solvent over here is non-polar. That's why the solubility of NaCl will be very minimum in this kind of solvent. Okay. So, let us understand the factors on which solubility depends. First thing is temperature 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 how does temperature affect the solubility will it always increase or decrease so it uh, can it decrease in uh, any case that i am increasing a uh, temperature i am increasing temperature but solubility is getting decreased can it happen yes it can happen 
suppose I have A as a solute and I am adding this as water and I am making a solution A H2 or I can write this as aqueous. Okay. Now, when the solution is done, when the solution is done, it can liberate or accept some sort of heat. If it is liberating heat, if it is liberating heat, then in that case, delta H value will be negative if it is liberating heat and in other case, let us say this is another solute, this is B solute and I am making this solution B aqueous and delta H is positive. Delta H positive means it is absorbing heat, it is absorbing heat. Now, the thing is that when this solution process is going on, when this solution process is go going on, the first one, heat is getting liberated. That means the system will heat up because of the production of heat. Now, if I increase the temperature, if I increase the temperature, the system will try to decrease the effect of additional change in temperature. The system will try to change or the resist the additional change in temperature. So, for this one, first one, if delta H, delta H is negative, delta H is negative and I am increasing temperature, I am increasing temperature. That means the system will try to get back into that side where temperature is being absorbed, where heat is be being absorbed. So, in the right side, I can say there is a production of heat. In the left side, there will be absorption of heat and that is why the system will try to get back into the reactant side or solubility, solubility will decrease, solubility will decrease from the less satellite principle, okay. Next thing, delta H is positive. Delta H is positive. Delta H positive means, delta H positive means heat is getting absorbed, heat is getting absorbed when B solute dissolves in water to form B solution. So, if delta H is uh, positive, that means the system is already cooling down. The system is already cooling down because of its absorption of heat. Now, if I am increasing temperature, now if I am increasing temperature, suppose this one, this one the system will try to resist the temperature change also like the previous one. Now, it can resist the temperature change by moving left to right because in the right side temperature is uh, heat is being absorbed. In the right side heat is being absorbed and the system will try to move into the right direction such that, such that it can resist the change in temperature. And if it is moving right direction, that means it is getting more dissolved, it is getting more dissolved, so solubility, solubility will increase, solubility will increase. So, these are the things you have to remember, that temperature may have positive or negative impact on the solubility of any substance, like that. You have to consider the delta H value, only then you can consider whether the solubility will increase or decrease with respect to temperature. Okay. Next thing, pressure. For pressure, we will understand two things. For gas in liquid, gas in liquid and first one that is solid in liquid, like NaCl water system, NaCl water system and gas in liquid suppose CO2 in water. Now, the thing is that for both type of solution, I will have different kind of pressure effect, different kind of pressure effect. Let us say, let us understand with this a picture itself, this is water beaker and this is also water. Same sort of temperature conditions are there and in this case, some NaCl particle is dissolved in it and for this case also it has some CO2 particles dissolved in it. Now what will happen that if we increase the temperature in both the cases, uh, sorry pressure, 
what will happen if I increase the pressure in both the cases? Solid over here, solid over here are mostly incompressible. Solid over here has mostly incompressible and liquid has also very less compressibility. That's why pressure effect of solid in liquid solution is very negligible. That's why pressure effect in solid in liquid solution is very negligible. So pressure, I can say pressure effect is <coughs> negligible. Negligible. <coughs> but in this case, gas in liquid, it has a enor <coughs> enormous effect of pressure. So what will happen? Let's say initially some gas molecules are in the solution and some gas molecules are in the above uh, layer of air. Okay. So if I increase pressure, if I increase pressure, that means I am adding more pressure from outside to this. Uh, let's say this is a piston over here. Let's say this is a piston over here and I am adding more pressure in it. That means the gas molecules over here that is in the air, the gas molecules, those are in the air, will have lesser space now to move around. I have added more pressure. So how does it look like? This is the water layer and now the piston has came down like this way. The piston has came down like this way. Now, some gas molecules which are initially there will always be present and the gas molecules that was in the air will have lesser space to move around, will have lesser space to move around and that means the collision of the gas molecule with the liquid will increase. I can say that because of lesser space to move around, the collision of the gas molecule with the liquid phase will increase and that is why most of the gas molecules will be coming into the solution. Most of the gas molecules will be coming into the solution. Now, if the gas molecules are coming into the solution, then I can say that solubility of the gas in the uh, liquid is increasing. That is solubility. That is solubility will increase. Solubility will increase with increase of pressure, with increase of pressure. For which case? For the case of gases. Did you understand? How does this thing happen? Initially, some gas molecules are in the solution. Some of the gas molecules are in the air. Now, I have suppressed or compressed the piston in the downward direction. So, what will happen? The gas molecules over here will now have lesser volume to move around and that is why they will have more number of collisions with the liquid phase or some of them will be coming into the solution. If some of them are coming into the solution, that means the number of gas particles that are dissolved in the uh, solution over there will increase and that means the solubility will increase with increase in pressure like that. But for uh, liquid, uh, solid in liquid, those have very minimum amount of effect of pressure but it has very enormous effect of pressure. Okay. This thing, this thing actually was uh, studied by Sir Henry and that was called Henry's law that will also will read in this chapter on. But before that we have another uh, thing to cover. Hmm. Another thing is types, types of solute and solvent. This has also very important effect on the solubility. Suppose I am taking, uh, suppose I am taking NaOH. NOH and in the other part I am having some let us say this is called hexane, this is called hexane, a organic compound. Okay. Now the solute is NaOH and the in the second case solute is hexane. Okay. Now I am dissolving this NaOH in one case in water, in another case I am dissolving this this into let us say um, another organic compound let us say I am taking as CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3 that is called butane that is called butane. 
Now, if I add NaOH in H2O, that will be dissolved, dissolved instantly. That will be dissolved in, in instantly, but this will be very low, very low solubility. For this case, when it is a solute, if I add this thing into water, that will no so no solubility. But if I add this into butane, that is butane, this one, it will show high solubility, high solubility. Why? For this one, you have to remember that like dissolves like formula. If I am dissolving some polar substance in a polar solvent, the solubility will be high because of similar force of attraction. But if I dissolving some polar substance in a non-polar substance, in that case, because of dissimilar force of attraction, the solubility will be very low, like this one for also. This is itself a non-polar. So, it will be dissolved in a non-polar substance only, not in a polar solvent. Okay. So, three factors you have to remember, temperature, pressure and the nature of solvent and solute, like dissolves like. This is like dissolves like. Okay. Next thing. Now, we will come to the vapor pressure. Vapor pressure. Vapor pressure. So, what is vapor pressure? That was I was thinking about to tell you what is vapor pressure. Have you boiled water anytime? Have you made any tea or coffee? I think you have made, but let me uh, say you the science behind it. What is vapor pressure and what to deal with it? Suppose, suppose I have a beaker over here and I have kept some solvent or some liquid over there. So, what will happen I if I left this as it is? If I left it, if I left it, what will happen? The molecules, the molecules will start to evaporate, evaporate and eventually after some times or days or months, the liquid over here will be completely evaporated. I will get nothing in the beaker. That is not my interest. My interest is when I take this beaker and do something, that is I close the lid. I close the lid. That means with a uh, plate or something, I close the lid. So, what will happen in this case? Like previous, some gas molecule, uh, some gas molecules will be generated because of this evaporation. Some gas molecules from the liquid will be generated because of this evaporation like that way. So, when the first, when first the evaporation starts, the rate of evaporation, the rate of evaporation is very high. That means the space over there will be filled up. The space over there will be filled up by the gas molecules of this liquid, the, by the gas molecules of this liquid. That means those molecules, those are evaporated out of this solution. Now, after some time, it will be observed that, okay, enough concentration is there in the air. Enough concentration is there because of this a uh, faster evaporation from the liquid to gaseous space. Now, the solute molecule will try to get back to the solution itself. Okay. First, there will be evaporation. After some time, it will be observed that the molecules, those are in the gaseous space, are trying to come down again to the solution. So, I can say that there is two processes happening. First one, first one is what? That is liquid liquid and it is going to what? It is going to gas, gas and in the second process gas over here is coming out as and condensing again to make the liquid. The first step over here it is called evaporation, evaporation and the second step when the gas condenses to form the liquid again, it is called condensation. Condensation. Okay. So, initially it is observed that rate of evaporation is higher than rate of condensation. So, initially rate of evaporation, it is higher than rate of condensation. 
but after some time the rate of the condensation increases such that such that their rate become equal rate become equal rate of evaporation and rate of condensation is equal that means it does not mean that evaporation is stopped or condensation is stopped that does mean that the rate at which the gas molecules are formed at the same rate the gas molecules are coming down to the solution and it is called the equilibrium state it is called the equilibrium state so if i draw a graph if i draw a graph with pressure versus time initially was what initially rate of evaporation was greater than rate of condensation so initially the graph will increase like that that will increase like that that means with increasing time the pressure over here is building up more and more pressure after some time this will be same that means rate of condensation is matching with the rate of evaporation in that case the pressure of the vessel the pressure of the vessel will not change any further because suppose i have 100 molecules 100 molecules of gas particles over there so if i am out of this 100 molecules if one molecule is coming into the liquid at the same time one molecule from the liquid will go back into the gaseous phase that means number of particles in the gaseous phase is not changing anymore that is called the equilibrium state at the equilibrium state at the equilibrium state what will happen initially the pressure is increasing pressure is increasing after some time the pressure will show a constant value the pressure will show a constant value and this is my friend is called vapor pressure vapor pressure that means when when a liquid when a liquid reaches its equilibrium state such that rate of evaporation becomes equals to rate of condensation the vapor pressure exerted at that time is called vapor pressure have you understood what is vapor pressure okay write the definitions write the definition the pressure the pressure exerted the pressure exerted by gas molecule molecules of liquid component the pressure exerted by gas molecule of liquid component that means the gas molecules are coming from this one na? just phase has changed but these are the same molecules over there gas molecules of the liquid component at equilibrium at equilibrium when when rate of evaporation becomes equal to rate of condensation it is called vapor pressure vapor pressure okay so from the graph from the graph this is also a pressure value 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 but these are not vapor pressure when we are dealing with vapor pressure you have to know that vapor pressure means the pressure value over here should be constant okay so this is vapor pressure now vapor pressure was studied vapor pressure was studied by henry in details so sir henry given a law regarding vapor pressure for uh, suppose i am uh, considering some soda bottle have you opened some soda bottle have you opened some soda bottle i think you have opened it so when you open the soda bottle what do we see that we see a some, some sort of uh, fizzing sound some sort of fizzing sound so what does this mean that means some sort of gas substance are dissolved some sort of gas substance are dissolved in the soda bottle that is coming out of it and it is usually the co2 co2 is dissolved in high pressure in the soda bottle and when you open that lid it uh, the co2 can easily come out of this uh, lid and it releases the pressure that's why the fizzing sound comes in so that's is related to solubility 
that is related to solubility of gas in liquid. Okay. We will understand with the picture that will be easier for us. That's what we do. Suppose I have a beaker. Again, we have a beaker, and I am adding some gas molecules over there with a closed lid. Some gas molecules are already dissolved, and some gas molecules are there. Some gas molecules are there, like that. This over here, it is the liquid phase. This is the air phase. Now, what will happen if I increase the pressure over there? What will happen if I increase the pressure over there? If I increase the pressure, if I increase the pressure over there, can I say that its solubility will increase? Can I say its solubility will increase? Get back to that slide. Well, it's this one. When I am in increasing pressure, solubility is increasing. That the same thing was observed by Sir Henry, and he decided. to make a better understanding by forming a law over there he said he said that solubility solubility of gas of a gas in liquid solubility of a gas in liquid is directly proportional is directly proportional proportional to the pressure above it to the pressure pressure above it that was the law suppose i have pressure this one say let's say 10 atmosphere now i have increased the pressure to 20 atmosphere what will happen 20 atmosphere means i have uh, compressed the piston if i have compressed the piston more number of gas molecule from uh, gaseous phase will come into the liquid phase if they are coming into the liquid phase then i can say that their solubility my friend will increase that means pressure pressure is directly related to they have written x or chi that is mole fraction mole fraction of the dissolved gas pressure of the gas pressure of the gas is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the gas that is for gas in the dissolved state in the dissolved state now p i can write as kh it is called henry's constant it is called henry's constant and this is the henry's law this is the henry's law so over here i have three components three components p p means what p means pressure pressure of the gas pressure of the gas gas above liquid how much pressure is there for the gas now kh kh is called henry's constant this is called henry's constant and this is over here it is mole fraction mole fraction of mole fraction of dissolved gas in liquid okay remember remember and remember x value over here does not mean the mole fraction of solvent it represent the mole fraction of the gas dissolved in it okay so another thing suppose i have suppose i have two gases a gas and b gas a gas and b gas let's take another one c kh values are given kh values are given as 10 20 and 30 this type of datas are given 
so you have to tell me that in which case in which case the solubility of the gas will be maximum at a fixed pressure in which case the solubility of the gas will be maximum at a fixed pressure these data are given so think about it 1 2 3 okay p is what p is kg times mole fraction this thing over here is directly re related to solubility chi of gas is directly related to solubility so if pressure is constant i can write that solubility is 1 by k h or i can do this as proportional also like that way. so from this one i can say that k h of lower value if the k h k h is lower value then solubility will be high in that case solubility will be high so for this one which one has lowest cage this is over here has lowest cage so solubility of a will be highest then solubility of b then solubility of c like that kh high means solubility is low another experiment the thing it is observed that kh over here that is henry's constant it is dependent on temperature it is dependent on temperature if you increase temperature then k h value also increases that is why we can say that temperature increase that means k h value increase it is observed that with increasing temperature k h value increases now if k h increase k h increase we have just seen that solubility will decrease solubility will decrease so these are two uh, two things so we can directly correlate temperature increase means solubility will decrease that thing we have said in the previous slide also where it is where it is temperature effect hmm. okay okay now hmm. okay done in the previous slide we have covered only solid solid and liquid so for this one just think like this way that i have a mixture or solid solution of some gas in a liquid some gas in a liquid so if i am increasing temperature what will happen what will happen because of increase in temperature the gas molecules now have higher kinetic energy to move you know that that with increasing temperature the species have higher kinetic energy because the gas molecules now have higher kinetic energy with increase in temperature they can easily move out they can easily move out from this solution to the gas phase from the solution to the gas phase if they are moving out from the solution to the gas phase that means i can say that their solubility is decreasing with increase increase of temperature so temperature increases means solubility decreases and this thing is also proved from the henry's law that thing is also proved from the henry's law okay